Repurposing fabric from things like shirts is really a lot of fun, but it can be a little bit tricky sometimes because the materials you use may not be stuff that we're used to using or figuring out how to cut it down in the most effective way is something to really think about too. So I've made a couple different quilts out of men's button-up shirts and they always turn out really nice because there's a lot of different prints that you can end up with from button-up shirts, a lot of plaids and stripes and a lot of fun colors. So they're a lot of fun to use, but it can be a little bit tricky sometimes. So this pattern that I used on this quilt here is a lot of fun to use because you use a lot of different shape, little sized um, blocks. And so it can add a lot of interest to a quilt, but this pattern uses this nice sashing that goes through. And even though you're using a lot of different prints, the same colored sashing really helps tie everything together. So I absolutely love this pattern. It's from Open Gate Quilt. It's a free pattern and um, it's just a downloadable PDF, really easy to use. So I will put a link to this pattern in the description. I think it's just called Easy Peasy Quilt or something like that. I'm not sure, but um, it's it turns out lovely. And so I used this pattern um, to make actually five different quilts for um, a friend of mine who asked if I could make some memory quilts out of some shirts that she gave me. So this one was with gray and it turned out lovely. And then I did it in tan. I actually did two in the tan and here is an interesting one because I wasn't able to get enough cuts to do the same type of pattern with the large blocks. So if you see all the center ones are um, the block that's pieced together instead of having every other block being this large one. And I still think it turned out really good, even going a different route. So keep that in mind that you can totally change things up if you need to. And this one is in a dark navy. So it's really fun to see how just using different colors can really change a quilt. So a few things to think about when you're using t-shirts, um, button-up shirts, any of those materials, you're gonna get a lot of shirts that are a different thickness, a different weight, a different type of fabric. So you'll wanna think about, you know, if a shirt says it's dry queen only, do I want to put that into a quilt because Am I gonna be able to wash it like I need to? It's just different things to think about. And then if you have a lot of shirts that are a different thickness, a different weight, you might wanna use some woven interfacing to bring them all to the same weight, the same feel when you're working on a quilt. Um, and a lot of these fabrics that we use in our clothing stretch a lot. So those can be kind of hard to cut and to sew especially when piecing, because they'll want to stretch out. So something you can do to kind of help with that is using um, some starch. And I like to use, when I'm using a lot of different fabrics, especially some, because I don't know about you, but like a lot of times I'll cut tags out of shirts. I know how to wash them. I usually tend to only buy stuff that I can wash at home. I don't have to dry clean. So I may not know exactly what the weight of the material is, so if you use a heavy spray starch, you don't have to worry about that as much. It'll just keep it all um, nice and stiff. And then I can cut it and do what I need to do to get it pieced together. So just keep a lot of those things in mind when you're working with shirts. So I'm gonna show you how I like to break down button up shirts to get them um, usable for cutting into the square sizes that I need. So keep on watching. Okay, so I have a bunch of collared dress shirts here that I'm going to be using to make into a memory quilt. And so what I like to do first when I'm using dress shirts like this that have buttons and pockets and sometimes they have long sleeves, sometimes short sleeves, is I like to break them down first. And, um, you know, typically 
when you're making a memory quilt out of um, collared shirts, there's not really like a design on it that somebody wants on the front or back. So I see it as being a lot of fabric I can get a lot of use out of. So um, it's a little different if you have like um, a jersey type shirt or a shirt that has a design on it because you're going to need to cut out that design. So for these type of shirts, um, what I like to do to break it down is really I just cut along the seams first. So um, if you're leaving the seams in the in the uh, quilt, like you're gonna you're okay with having a seam down the side um, show up on a block, then it might be different. But otherwise, I just cut at the seams and you could do it different ways you could do it really carefully or um, I'll usually just get in here and get started on it I like to cut off the sleeves first so I'll just cut along the seam here and I use nice sharp fabric scissors to do this so I keep the sleeves because you can actually get a lot more fabric from it than you would think. It is really going to depend on because this is going to be a quilt with different size blocks that I'm making and I'm going to be making several of them and my plan is to try to get fabric from each shirt in all of the quilts. Um, so that's just going to be something to think about is how many quilts, what size quilt are you going to be trying to get out of the project? Because, um, you know, you may not need to be as careful with each piece as I'm going to be. So, um, so what I do when I get to this point is I want to open up this piece so that it's wide. Now, that wouldn't be completely necessary um, if you know the size blocks you're going to get will fit on just one piece here because then you'll get double the blocks right because it's layered so just think about that if you want a really big square you could cut down the seam and open this up and then just be able to double cut and get through everything a lot faster what i am going to cut off is the cuff because i know i'm not going to be able to use that and it is pretty thick through here, so that's kind of why um, it's not going to be a piece that you'll really use. And sometimes they'll even have a lot of wear on them along the edge. This is in pretty good condition. There's not a lot of um, wear on it, but you're not going to really be able to get along here. But another nice thing about cutting off that cup is now you can open up these pleats that were there. So depending on the size blocks that you're getting, you might be able to get a square or two out of that side. So up to you if you wanna cut along here and open it up wide. I think I'm gonna be getting a few four and a half inch blocks. So I might keep it this way for now because um, then I can just cut a little bit quicker through there. So we have that piece and then we'll cut off the other pocket or another pocket other sleeve okay so i have the other sleeve cut off so i'm going to set that to the side so now we are left with just this portion of the shirt so here what i like to do is cut off kind of like the front vest panel here So I cut off, like I said, I like to cut off along the sleeve or the seams. And I'm just going to cut right through the collar here because the collar I'm not going to be able to use anyway. And you can either just leave it on while you cut around everything or, um, or cut it off if, it, if you feel like it'll get in your way. So set that to the side and then I'm just gonna cut off the other side. Just 
So again, I'm just going to cut right through the collar along the, um, along the seam. So there is another panel. Now, um, the yoke along here, it's, it's usually along right under the back collar. It's two layers thick of, um, usually two layers thick of fabric and it holds a lot of the pleats in the back of the shirt. Now I just cut it off. If you are going to be using a pattern that has small enough squares that you could fit them through here, you may want to save it because it's usually, um, you know, a lot of fabric that you can use. I'm not cutting squares that small, but I am going to want to cut it off. And the reason I cut it off is because it'll open up all these pleats through here. And once you press that out, it'll be a lot of fabric that you can end up using that way. So this is a nice big piece of fabric. It's about, it probably close to being a fat quarter here. Um, it might even be a little bit bigger than a fat quarter. So the back panel of your shirts are gonna give you a lot of fabric. So I'm gonna set all these to the side. And what I like to do is typically start cutting them all down. Um, you'll notice on some of the shirts that there might be staining in some areas or some areas, especially under the armpits, are gonna be a lot more worn than others. If that is the case, um, you could either ask if you're making it for somebody um, what they want you to do if you wanna work they want you to work around um, stains, especially if it's in like a prominent place or if they want that worked in because it's a reminder of them to the person that you're honoring with the quilt. So um, just check. And I like to try to get um, at least like one fun feature of a shirt, like a pocket in um, or something like that. But it's something you may also want to check in with the person and see like, hey, do you want any pockets on the quilt or do you want me to leave those off? So it's just gonna be their preference and yours when quilting it. So, okay, I'm gonna break these shirts down and then I'll show you more of the pattern that I'm gonna be doing.